outstanding year as a head coach for Chris Jones. And I think everybody feels like Dave Dickens is the next great head coach. Whenever that happens, he is the associate head coach in Calgary and the head coach in waiting. Second and six. Going to take another shot for Rodgers. He's got it. Into the end zone. Touchdown. And they've got another star receiver. Oh. And Bowley by Mitchell has four touchdown passes. Can't, uh, Chris Jones can't draw up a better defense, and Ortha Foster can't be in better position. I mean, Foster is one-on-one -on -one here on Eric Rodgers, and he's right in his hip. But that's that jumping ability, the playmaking ability, like ripping down a rebound in basketball that Mitchell told us yesterday and why he likes Rodgers. Trusted his receivers here this afternoon. Bowley by Mitchell goes over 300 on the day. Eric Rodgers has hit Peter twice. You know, sometimes the, you, you draw them up and you get a man open because there's a bust in the coverage. I've only seen that happen once in this game so far for the Edmonton Eskimos. That was that little flat pass to John Cornish. But outside of that, Mitchell's just trusting his receivers. And he's saying, you know, go win the battle for me. And they have been more than not. Extra point for Perez. As the Stampeders poured on. And Bo Levi Mitchell puts on a show in the West Final. I've been giving a lot of credit to these Calgary receivers, but how about Eastern Washington, Bo Levi Mitchell, back shoulder throw here at Eric Rogers. He throws it out in front here, and his placement is there. Foster has a chance. It's a back shoulder throw, and the accuracy is bang on to Eric Rogers, giving his receiver a chance to win that battle at the top of the route. I mean, that's back throw, back shoulder throw at its best. Chris Jones yesterday said he's a young Ricky Ray, and he wishes that comparison wasn't so accurate. And they have contained him, and there is Sherman Ocampo on, on the teams getting the job done as well. Sherman Products had a good day, and it's been a long day already for Mike Riley and the Eskimos. Well, he's getting it out, but he's going to he's got to stand back there and start throwing it. And that's the question is, can he number one plant on that foot at all to get the ball deep? We haven't seen any of it from Edmonton this game here. Now this evening. Can he even plant on it and get it down the field? As a completion here, Paris Jackson has another catch. The good news for Edmonton, Calgary does give up some passing yards. The bad news is they're patient and wait on you to make mistakes. And it's just a little bit more tender when he when he drops into that throwing motion, isn't it? Saw the great feature in the pregame show from Matt Dunnigan talking about how he pushes the football. Here's a Darius Bowman on the edge. And he'll step out around the 45 and get an Edmonton first down. Yeah, that's what he does so well. And that's why he can fight through this foot injury because as Matt can explain to to us and, and did in the pregame show that the power for your throw, especially on a deep ball, comes from the body, from the ground up. But because Riley is so big and strong at 6'3", 215, and he sort of pushes the ball in his release, he still has the ability to fight through the foot injury, but, but he's got to now just stand back there and chuck it. They've got to get big chunks here. Big to right. Airing it out. Watch Bowman. Jump ball. And Bowman, I think he got the... He does have the catch. Buddy Jackson had his hands on the football. Somehow, Bowman got the tip and had the foot in. Well, Buddy Jackson won the first half in the one-on-one -on -one battles. This time, Bowman fades away from a little bit. Now, Jackson recovers, but does he get a foot in bounds? 
When he has possession of the ball. Foots in, but it's the knee down, and we're going to get a challenge from Nagel. But it looked like he may have secured it before the knee hit the the white sideline, right in front of the Calgary bench. Both feet were in bounds when Bowman first touched the ball. But you're right, when he tipped it to himself, when he had possession, was the knee down on the white strike. Calgary is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. We'll review the play. Another, take another look here. Both feet in bounds when he touches it here, but doesn't have possession. That's a good catch. It does look like he brings it in just before the knee touched. So this is after first touch. Now both feet are inbounds there. Yeah, I think you're right, Chris. I think that play stands. D where there hasn't been much to cheer for for the Eskimos. That's a highlight real catch. Yeah, because the right leg was on the top of Buddy Jackson. The left leg hadn't even touched yet. I don't know if they have to go to the command center to just ask Paul Lapolice, who's <laughs> cruising down the sideline there. See, that's that's on Buddy Jackson, and that, that other knee. After review, the ruling on the field has been confirmed by replay. First down. Yeah. So it's a 36-yard play for Darius Bowman. The Stampeder 27. Fred Stamps back in the huddle for the Edmonton Eskimo. I think it's just the second time I've seen him in there all game. Calgary fans turn up the volume. Riley dumps it off, and John White is rustled down by Duran Mayo. Well, those linebackers have done a job today, Simpson and Mayo. Yeah, that, that play was designed to get Stamps and Bowman on the short side of the field and run everybody off, run the secondary off, so that they could get the one-on-one -on, -one on John White on a linebacker like Jerome Mayo. But Mayo was in such great coverage, the play just didn't have a chance to work, put him in second and long. White goes to the sideline, second and eight. Calvin McCarty in the backfield. Stamps to the short side. Riley steps up over the middle and incomplete. It was behind Bowman. There's a flag down in the Stampeder secondary. And that flag came from a long way away from... Illegal contact on a receiver, Calgary, number 29, 10-yard penalty, first down, Edmonton. That's Jamar Wall, who was tied for the league lead in interceptions with Dexter McCoyle of the Eskimos. You see the illegal contact on Devin Bailey. To defend this ground, you just can't trip him up like that. So into the red zone for the Eskimo, first down. Short drop, has time, has stamps, and a catch at the five-yard line. They're gonna mark him just short of the five, and so it will be just short of a first down. A little timing out there, he's looks so deep and go to the back of the end zone, then just pulls up, comes back to the football. So second and short, and they'll plunge for the first down. And get inside the five. Just two for five in the red zone against the Stampeders this season. Riley's barely getting back to that huddle. But they may have to carry him off today to not finish. stays in so John White not part of this 
And they're going to throw. End zone. Off a hand. Josh Bell, the safety, breaks it up. Incomplete. A little surprise, John White wasn't there on a first and goal from the three. He checks in now. Well, I, I know what they're trying to do here. Edmonton's trying to get this matchup with the Darius Bowman and Fred Stamps here and get both those guys to run them off and get any back. Kendall Lawrence or John White out of the backfield in one-on-one, -on -one, but just they're not getting it done. That's good of coverage from the Calgary Stampeders. White back in. Three receivers now shuttle to the short side of the field. Another short drop. Back there again. Touchdown. Paris Jackson has a major score for the Eskimos. Paris Jackson, just a subtle move when the ball arrives. This is the experience of Jackson to just take that extra step back towards the line of scrimmage he has run his route deep enough that he had that room to just get a little separation from the defender Eskimos not going for two thought they might to get it to 24 but they'll take it one point here after their first major of the game as Riley connects with veteran Paris Jackson 5.55 left, third quarter. Your HBO subscription just got better with every season and every episode of your favorite HBO series. Now available on demand. Shows such as Boardwalk Empire, True Blood, The Newsroom, True Detective, and Game of Thrones. Subscribe to HBO Canada now and never miss an episode. Well, they got one. We're fight to the end, baby. We're going to fight to the end. We're down by three touchdowns. Want to say what's up to my daughter? So, so they get one, and as Paris Jackson told you, they need three more and a little bit more. Cedric Cunningham bobbled and now takes off. Flags are flying as he's upended around the 45-yard line. The reaction of Calvin McCarty to be holding a Calgary. Touchdown for the Eskimos, nine plays, 79 yards. Holding Calgary, number 27, 10 yard penalty, first down. Jeff Heck called on the hold, backs up Bo Levi Mitchell. That hasn't been a problem for Mitchell today. Quite a game for Bo Levi Mitchell. The question always with a young quarterback in his first start in the playoffs, can he handle the big stage? And certainly Mitchell has done that with four touchdown passes. On one of them, John Cornish did all the work on that little shovel pass, but he's trusting his receivers. Great accuracy on the deep ball. 307 yards passing and four TDs so far. Averaging 30.7 per completion. John Cornish takes off that time. Only by Mitchell had four touchdowns, no interceptions of the three meetings in the regular season, so he has matched that in three quarters of football today. His max against the the Eskimos in the regular season, 252 yards. This is second 300-yard game of the season. Second of the season, just third of his career at 307. And again, no mistakes so far, no interceptions. Cornish again. This time met at the line and brought down Deion Lacey there. No gain for Cornish. And it will be third and two. It doesn't look like it's his first start in the postseason. The way he's played here tonight and and just the way he carries himself. I'm reading between the lines, but we had a little chat yesterday, and I got the impression he was disappointed he didn't 
get named the All-Star in the West. I think he feels pretty confident of what he did this year, what the upside potential is, and that maybe he hasn't been completely noticed yet. We're noticing today. is brought down immediately at the Eskimo 45. Just over four minutes left, third quarter. Ours is a world of opportunity, a world of challenges. Along with the energy that makes our lives easier and the energy that furthers our creativity, we need the energy to always ask is there a better way to get things done? We're Canada's largest energy company, and our answer is yes. Come and see what yes can do. The CFL and our partners at Football Canada want to ensure that we are growing a safe game. Hit! The Safe Contact program is designed to train coaches in proper equipment fitting and safe tackling techniques. A standard of safety we help preserve the future of our game. Make sure your youth coach is safe contact trained. Yes, Pump those arms. Pump those arms. Building a better game means building a safer game. This Saturday, it's the warm-up to the biggest party of the year. Great Cup Saturday. Get you set with CFL Player Awards, features from team practices and more. It all gets underway Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on TSN. Ticats are in. The Stampeders with a major leg up and a critical series for Chris Jones's offense upcoming here. Uh, he keeps looking at that scoreboard. Takes that big deep breath. That's 25 points. Seems like a tall mountain to climb, but it's one drive at a time for Mike Riley. Success off the last one. Can they build on it? Have to come away with points again, obviously. Offense has Stamps and Bowman together. Bad shotgun. Scooped up there by White. Not sure if he was the intended target or not as it slipped from the hands of the center, Justin Sorensen. Boy, and Fred Stamps had got him behind coverage too. And that's, you know, that's that again shows you another illustration of the ultimate team game when if you don't get the snap from center, the play doesn't work. You don't get the protection up front. You don't give your quarterback time to throw the football. Your receivers got to get open. You all got to work together. Stamps had a shot. If Riley got the ball. Second and nine. Taking a shot wide open. Kuhar's got it. And his momentum takes him out of bounds when it looked like he might score. But it is a big play from Riley to Nate Kuhorn. That's the first time all game long that Mike Riley has just stepped back into that drop planted that foot in the ground and thrown a strike on time. He steps into this baby and he throws Kuhorn right to the sideline. That's why I threw him off balance a little bit and he ran out of bounds or he walks in. Former Calgary Dino, product of Medicine Hat High School. They lost the provincial final to Lethbridge this weekend. First down Edmonton. Riley over the middle, Bowman's got it, and scores! They're not done yet. Riley to Bowman, a 16-yard touchdown. Darius Bowman knows he's going to take a hit here. Riley's got to throw him into the middle of the coverage in the trail position by Brandon Smith. Over 100 yards on the day for Darius Bowman. And they send out Hugh O'Neill again to kick one. O'Neill puts it through. 18 points the lead for Calgary. 